While we've talked a lot about Appalachian language here on my channel, because I'm just crazy about it, I'm plum foolish over our Appalachian language. It's so rich and colorful. We've mostly focused on words and phrases. We've not really focused on grammar usages. Uh, you've probably already listened to me enough to know that I do not use perfect grammar, uh, proper grammar, when I speak. It's an interesting thing. I think a lot of people in Appalachia would agree with me. When they're speaking, they speak one way. When they're writing, then that's when those grammar things they learned in school actually comes out. So as a writer, when I'm writing on the blind pig and the acorn, I'm still not saying I'm perfect by no means, but I think about those things. If I'm speaking and communicating, I don't give a thought to grammar. I just say what comes out of my mouth. And I think that would be a common uh, thing that a lot of people in Appalachia would agree with. Maybe if they're writing a letter to the bank, or if they're in school and they're having to write a paper to turn into their teacher, they think of it a different way than if they were just speaking and communicating with their friends and family. Sometimes those usages are so ingrained in me that it's hard for me to sit here and think about, hmm, what's weird grammar that we use? Well, I know we add letters. Sometimes we take letters away. We change words like that. But um, a lot of times I like to look in the dictionary, Smoky Mountain English, in the front of it, it's got a whole section about grammar. And a lot of the times when I read some of those little entries, then I'm like, oh yeah, we do that. But it's, but it's hard to, when you're just thinking about it, um, to connect the two. And then also, like I said, I'm not by no means any, an expert on grammar. I'm not, so, so that's another reason it helps me. But I've jotted down a few for us to talk about today. This one's really common, and it may be one, if you're like me, it's common, but you don't really even think about it until you do, until it's pointed out to you. But it's leaving, it's one of those where we take a letter off, so we leave the letter S, we leave it off of things like pound, miles, and years. So instead of say pounds, miles, and years, we would just say pound, mile, or year. Uh, so I bet that box weighed 50 pound, and I should have known because I'm the one that carried it up the hill for the last 10 year. So you'll hear that. So for 50 year, I've been, and we leave the S off. So that one's really common where I live. I'll be interested to see if it's common where you live. Another really common one is leaving the G off of like the I and G word. So we might say fighting instead of fighting. Um, there's a whole series of those, of course, it, it, just about all the e, ING words you can think about, it, we just leave the G off of, so those are really common. A lot of times we might lengthen the word by adding ES to it. These are not as common, but you still hear them some. So um, we add an ES to words that only need an S to be plural, so maybe You'll hear, uh, instead of test, like they're taking tests at school this week, it's the last week of school, They might somebody might say testas, they call them testas. Deskas, you'll hear that one. Um, nestas, postas, like I, I was out, I need to get four more postas done uh, from the store so that I can build the fence today that I'm working on out in the pasture. Ghostas, even maybe ghostas. So those are not as common, but I have heard those. And then, of course, uh, the one we like to add R to words, like wash always comes to mind. We've got to put that R in there. You'll hear breakfast sometimes, wimmering, put an R in there, and there's a lot of other ones that I'm sure that you can think of some of those. The dictionary actually says those, adding those ES on the words to make them plural, is a holdover from Old English. According to the notes I kept from my Appalachian Studies class I had in college way back when, that the professor that I had also said that was a holdover from Old English way of speaking to add those ES, even though it sounds so weird today for us to say, uh, I'm almost done with my testis, or there's, there, move those four deskus over there. You know, you think, that's so weird. Why would anybody say it? But there are places where uh, in Appalachia where those holdovers are still there. Although I would say they're fading fast, for sure. Another common one is, uh, you remember when you were in school and you were learning the different tenses of, uh, of words, of verbs? I used to love that. I loved putting them all, organize them in the little columns, you know, and, and I was really good at it and made, it, made good grades uh, typically in school, so I really liked that. But when it comes to speaking, I don't do that. So for um, come, for the word come, you've probably already noticed this about me. The correct would be you come, you came, and you come. Those are the different tenses of how you were speaking. In Appalachia, we usually typically just say, come, come, come. We don't differentiate. So yesterday I come by to see you, but they said you were already gone. Instead of, I should have said yesterday I came by to see you and, and you were already gone. 
eat the correct usage would be eat ate eaten a lot of times it'll just be eat 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 so for martha's birthday last month we eat the best supper fried taters soup beans cornbread and fresh kill lettuce and it was so good but see we used eat so that's a, that's another one that you'll hear give is another one that's uh is give gave given but you'll just hear give 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 so i just give you ten dollars at the beginning of the week and you've already spent it so give instead of give gave given it's just give 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 run instead of run ran and run it's just run 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 yesterday i ran over to walmart's i guess that's where i was when you come by so that one's common those are all common here where i live i'll be interested to, to know if they're common where you live and i'm guilty of all those i that's how i speak all those now if i'm writing them down if i'm writing a blog post if i'm writing a uh, a letter to someone then i'm not going to use those that's just how our brains how our brains work differently when we're actually putting pen to paper typing putting ink to paper or speaking communicating another common grammar usage is to use like to for almost or nearly so here's an example we was coming across the mountain when it fell a flood and i like to have froze to death before we got back to the house so instead of saying i nearly froze to death we would say i like to have froze to death another example he liked to have quit after they talked to him that way but i told him just hold on a little longer and it all work out so we you should say probably he nearly quit but we would say he liked to have quit so that's an interesting one and that one's really common where i live so a lot of times if somebody's kind of talking trying to talk like appalachians you'll hear yuns and wins and all those i do hear yuns there's people here that say it and i say it if yuns would get up and help this wouldn't take so long so i definitely say that one i don't hear wins as much though here i'll be interested to know if you hear it where you live but there's other examples that are uh, kind of where we shorten that where it, what it's actually um actually you're trying to say you ones or we ones it actually shortens it down to we'll get you another and we'll just put that in in there get instead of one we'll get you another one we'll get you another and if you want one because we got plenty another and that's really common here even those little ones are mighty tasty little ones you'll hear that uh, granny was hoping for some big ones the opposite of the little ones but she didn't get narian narian so nary one but it kind of gets shortened to the end to the end now that is a mess that's what i people say about chatter about chitter excuse me about katie still that is a mess so it's really instead of saying that one it's taken off those first two and you're just i mean off the two letters and you're just left with the end that is a mess this next one's one I read in the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English, and when I first read it, it's one of those where I was like, huh, do we do that? Because I don't really understand because I'm not a grammar expert. Let me read to you what it says. Progressive forms are frequently employed for stative verbs of mental activity, especially want in the process given the verbs a dynamic interpretation. So that one kind of made me go, hmm, but when I read the examples, I was like, sure, we do that for sure. So um, I think it means it's what I'm, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but words like wanting and liking are typically used to describe feelings. However, in Appalachia, and I'm sure beyond too, not just in Appalachia, they're sometimes given more emphasis, which almost makes them seem like action verbs, almost makes it seem like an action verb. Um, so here was some examples that I made up. I saw him walking down the road about dinner time. He was wanting somebody to take him to the store so he could buy cigarettes. So he was, that wanting is the part. I was liking that crowd up at the restaurant just fine till they got to talking ugly and I never said a word to nobody. I just got up and left. So those are some examples of using the liking and the wanting. I'd be interested to know if you're familiar with them. Another one where we add a letter, it's not really that we're adding a letter. Well, we are adding a letter, but we're kind of adding a word, a little word, A, before words. So you've probably heard people say, I'm a going, uh, I'm a working, those kind of things. And that's, that was one that was in the dictionary that I thought, when I read it, I, it, what my thought on that was, was, yeah, but doesn't everybody in the whole world do that? But apparently, maybe not. Maybe you do. You can let me know. But here's some examples for it. I've been working at this all day, and I ain't got it done yet. Granny's a-keeping that little girl lives down the road today. 
there was uh, ice on the back porch this morning. As soon as I stepped on it, I started a falling and a stumbling all over the place. So those are so common that I don't even register hearing them from people. And uh, it's funny, one time when I was talking about this phenomenon of grammar, I said, but I don't really do that, even though it's really common. Well, my family quickly told me, yes, you do. You say that all the time, pretty much on a regular once a week or three or four times a week. You say, I'm I'm a, a going down to Granny's to help her and I'll be back in a little while. Or I'm a going down at Granny's to get this or that or borrow some sugar and I'll be back in a minute. So they informed me really quickly that I do use it, even though I don't actually think that I do, that that's one of the ones that I use. So I hope that um, you'll leave me a comment and let me know which of these grammar uses you're familiar with. And if you're like me, like if you speak one way and write another way, if that's a common um, occurrence in your life too. And you, you pretty much already know this, but um, I'm gonna keep a talking about Appalachian language, whether it's grammar or words and phrases. It's just one of my favorite things to think about. I love our rich, colorful language. And I hope that you do. I hope you enjoy these posts. And mostly though, you know, I just hope you'll keep dropping back by and helping me celebrate Appalachia.